Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. This is our deep dive discography, where we will go through each studio album and rank them, and then highlight any notable releases, non-studio album releases along the way. Today's artist is the Lawrence Arms, and we are talking about their first album, A Guided Tour of Chicago. Why the fuck are you guys still on your beer? <laughs> I thought we did that until you introduced us. My bad. We, no, what, what the fuck? This is, uh, Tim, Tim started the thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So anyway, <laughs> if you like this content, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to see how this all plays out. We also have a Discord link below where you can join a little community, talk about music, show off your vinyl, and take part in polls to give you feedback on your favorite albums. So come hang out with us. Patreon members also get ex access to special channels where they can help us choose the next artist we cover and even pick one of their own with their rankings being added alongside ours. So check that out as well. So with that all out of the way, let's get ready for an evening of extraordinary... extraordinary circumstance with Tim. Howdy. And he will give you a guided tour of Chicago, Joe. I don't know anything about Chicago, but I'll still do it. And I had a really cool one <laughs> written out for, uh, for Cole Quit, but sadly he could not be here. We might insert a video of his Lawrence Arms thoughts because he really got into him and sucks he couldn't be here tonight. But oh well. Go on, Tim. Give me my introduction. Oh, I was... Uh... He's been kicked out of Kevin Costner's casino at least four times. <laughs> That's Jason. That works for me. All right, so <laughs> the Lawrence Arms, they're a band that they're near and dear to my heart. They're one of my favorite, you know, lyrical writers. Speaking of writing, I don't know. They might have read Stephen King's on writing, and that's how they came up with all these great ideals. I don't know. Stephen King, let us know on Twitter if you're a fan of the Lawrence Arms, and if so, what do you think of a guided tour of Chicago? So yeah, Joe, do you want to? You guys go ahead and tell your uh, history with the band, the Lawrence Arms. Um, so I found the Lawrence Arms, uh, like if some of you remember a lot of past videos, through Jason. That's where I find I found most of these bands that we've covered. Um, I believe uh, my my history may be off a little bit, but I believe there was a some kind of mix CD um, that Jason gave me and had this band on it. Who I was like, oh, this is I like this. I don't know who it is, and I kept thinking they were different bands. Every time I'd hear Chris sing or Brendan sing, I thought it was two different bands uh, for for the longest time. And then finally, we got to the point where you know I, I found what you know I was like, who in the fuck is this? Who do you, who's on the CD you're giving me? Um, and found out it was Lawrence Arms. And I want to say this was probably Apathy time um, whenever I found them. So Apathy and Exhaustion, their third album. Uh, one of my, probably my second favorite band of all time here from Lawrence Arms. Yeah, I mean, pretty much we're, yeah, Apathy and Exhaustion is going to be the first for me as well. But uh, go ahead, Tim. What's your uh... new band, new discography? <laughs> I had never heard of this band before. Uh, you know, uh, starting this show with you guys, and you guys kept bringing it up, like we're going to do the Lawrence Arms, we're going to do the Lawrence Arms, and here we are. Doing so the Lawrence yeah, Arms. Uh, and I was told going in that I would not have first album bias um, with this band. Um, hashtag first album bias, and uh, I don't know. Do you think you were right? I surely hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and the, I could forgive you for first album bias. I, I think on, on a guided tour Chicago. It is a strong first album. I liked it a lot. It's uh, super punk rock. Um, there's a little bit of uh, vocal interplay going on. Um, I guess. The one dude with the melodic voice sings on one song. Um, but yeah, this is a punk rock banger. Yeah, this is mostly a Brendan song record. Mm -hmm. But that is one of my notes. Very Brendan heavy album. 
So would he be considered then like the lead singer of the band? Uh, depends on the album. Uh, this album, yes. Uh, as we as we go, we evolve, and we'll talk about more. Uh, I definitely highlight a lot throughout my notes, but as we go on, we'll see that there isn't really a lead singer for this band. When sure, we get- yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, we'll get into it throughout the albums, but uh, each vocal character seems to bring a different musical character as well. And uh, this one is very um, heavy on the fast and punk rock. Yep. Um yeah, the same story as Joe. I got into him from a Fat Records comp presenting the Dancing Machine. I'll explain more into how I got into him after that when we get to Apathy. But yeah, got a tour. You're right. It's a strong damn first record. Yeah. <laughs> so really good, uh, especially for what late '90s, right? Yeah, '99. Yeah. Um, you know, we're right on the cusp of uh, the whole pop punk explosion of the 21st century. And uh, and we'll get to those years as well. But here we are, uh, you know, just a real strong, hardcore uh, before, I don't know, I, I guess before they were given any pop punk band they could find a reality TV show or whatever. Um yeah, it's just good. It's just good. Um, like all the the instrumentation, uh, like uh, everybody's playing, fantastic. Great drummer, great guitar, great bass, uh, uh, great man. lyrics. Like, yeah, it's just a great album. I mean, this is 1991, 99. This is a contender for the meat grinder for us. <laughs> yeah, it, it could make it. Yeah. Go check out our uh, 1990 series for you know what the hell we're talking about. Our what? ongoing. Ongoing series. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So for me, track by track, the first the first song, you know, whatever, it's nothing. Evening, easily a top song contender. Uh, tonight, I'll sit around pushing my shit down the drain using a plunger and a clothespin while I wrangle the chain. That's how you start a record. <laughs> it, you know. <laughs> That's how you start a career. It's still, this song still holds like some of my favorite Lawrence Arms lyrics being, um, tonight I'll get hungry staring at the mustard in my empty fridge because it's so visceral and real and it's a simple line, but it's not that like you could see them writing it. You could see them living this song. They're like the counting crows of punk rock for me. They paint a visual picture of storytelling. Uh, yeah, I knew I knew Tim would like that one. They, they're, they're, they tell stories that are vastly different than the counting crows. <laughs> but quite a bit. They they are the counting crows of punk rock for me. There you go. Uh, oh. Kevin, you know, it's a punk rock song about how we fucked over the Native Americans. Um, guided tour it's literally a guided tour of Chicago from Brendan you know he talks about Walgreens on Belden and Clark where inspiration dies alone take one down I would put on a mix CD back in the day I love the vocal delivery someday we're all going to weigh it's, a, it's the matrix the, and the plot of Wall-E like rolled into one from 1999 uh, the north side this is where you start to get a feel of where they're going and their vocal delivery to me and this might be blasphemous in the pop punk community but Brendan and Chris are way above Mark and Tom as far as vocals go Um, I will second that I third it (laughs) they are 100% amazing what they end up doing Uh, Smokestacks there's some interesting tempo changes. It's a decent song. Uh, Detention. This is where I, w- I want them to re record this entire album like, with good production. 
because the vocals are like kind of mixed weird on some of these. Um, 18, in 18 inches, decent closing track, kind of the first example of the band making a song feel like the lyrics. Like it sounds like a snowstorm, it swirls, it's hazy, it's thick, but it has those eerily quiet moments as well as the New Year's Resolution reference that'll come up in another song later. And I love the bass in that song. It's just a fucking banger of a first record. I love it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. My, all of my notes just disappeared off my screen, so that's, that's a lot of fun. That's why you got to print them. <laughs> you know, me and printers don't get along. Um, Tim, if you'd like to go while I wrangle these notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's a really strong debut. It's um, right off the bat. Yeah, you can tell that... Um, they're going to grow into something that uh, ends up being a, a better version of this. But this is pretty good. Like, this is a great starting point. I don't really have specific notes on this one. Um, oh, I've got I just you. tried to enjoy it, you know? <laughs> and uh, just, uh, you know, one thing um, that I'll... I'll just mentioned once here that I appreciated about all of these albums is they're all pretty much half an hour long. Um, yeah. You're in, you're out. Uh, so while each song has its own distinctive flavor as a whole, um, this album uh, and, and every album really, but this album specifically it really, uh, you almost don't even know where the songs start and stop because they're all kind of the same tempo-ish. Um, they do a lot of really interesting tempo changes, like you said, uh, a lot of cool rhythmic stuff. So, yeah, it, it's um, much like a Phantomos record. You just sit back and take it and uh, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, and Tim, with the uh, the length of albums, I was telling my wife, uh, I was like, so we can measure this distance to wherever we're going there by one Lawrence Arms album. That's that's how long it takes to get to wherever we were going. Sure. We use, uh, <laughs> yeah, I could see a bunch of these being perfect. Just pop it in the, uh, the 97 Honda Civic CD player or whatever and cruise on down to the local Walgreens and... <laughs> So kind of my run through of it, uh, obviously, you know, for the little bit of background history on Lawrence Arms, uh, we'll refer to the Chicago bands sometimes. I know Jason and I used to talk about like Rise Against, Alkaline Trio, the Lawrence Arms. All these bands kind of intermingled, played in a bunch of bands together. Um, we've got some, uh, you know, alumni from the Broadways and uh, Slapstick and things of that nature. Um coming to it so they've all been around by the time they're making this album and have kind of you know cut their teeth elsewhere uh but for the lawrence arms starting a brand new band uh, that they really didn't think was going to last you know they just thought it was kind of a flash in the pan uh this is amazing this is a, a really really good album um i love the intro uh, leading into an evening of extraordinary circumstances i just like how it flows into it um, the intro is not really anything but it just flows into it really well um Love it. Love, I think this is a great opener. Um, Jason said some of the lyrics, but, you know, the tonight I'll eat some potato chips and watch my favorite shows, watch some infomercials and watch some TV snow. For us old folks, we know when TV, you know, TV channels actually went off air. You know, they throw on some infomercials late at night, then it was nothing. Um, but you could really read the lyrics to that whole song um, and, and quote it. So that's great. I tried not to do that as much with Morris Horns because I would just write Pages worth of pages. Uh, Kevin to... Costner's Casino um, is a good song. Um, you know, who would have thought when you dance, dollar signs were in your eyes. I like that from the Dancing Wolves. Um, a Guided Tour Chicago. Um, basically, the like Jason said, it is just kind of a walk through Chicago in a day. Um, the, the line that stuck out to me it was, he was Ed from the South Side who gave me cigarettes and hope. Um, so I like that. Shout out, Ed, even though you didn't give me cigarettes, but you do give me hope. <laughs> um, he just steals lighters. 
Uh, take one down, pass arounds are good. Uh, someday we're all going to weigh 400 pounds, uh, like download my ashes and a hard drive when I die. Um, fun, like I said, Matrixy. The North Side and LL, any number of shitty apartments. I love this song. Um, this is, you know, I love the duet on phone calls that never should be made. Um, and the So Where Will You Be in 10 Years? This is the part where you say, not right here, or you don't say right here. Um, that passing back and forth of vocals is a real later thing that they grow into. Um, so I love seeing it here. Smoke Snacks is good. Detention, once again, we've got uh, them singing together. Um, as others follow through the leaves, another show their vampire teeth. Uptown Radio is good. 18 Inches, a great song. Um, when I woke up and looked around, I found that my dreams had melted into dirty puddles on the ground. Um, so just really, really good stuff. I, finding them later on this album and coming back, um, I love seeing where they grew into. Um, now, and they, they haven't really even honed it perfect or had the perfection in apathy when I first found them. But they, you know, that muzzle top to somebody over there. So, yeah, there's a guy to tour. I love that album. It's amazing. Anybody else got anything to add? Pretty short video. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a pretty short album. Short album. <laughs> I think that it's, uh, you know, some people talk about starting points and having to start in other portions of discography for a band. I, I don't think there's any problem if you like punk to start here. I would recommend something else, but... Well, there's a lot of... I, I think there's a better album, but I don't think there's a problem starting here. I did just learn uh, something, but I don't know if this is the album to share it on, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't have much else to say about it. I mean, it's it's not my favorite Lord Songs record, but... There's absolutely nothing wrong with listening to it. There's not a skippable track on it. I mean, it's, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Yep. So, how, we're, how we do this, if you haven't seen a previous video, is... We rank them as we go. So, Guided Tour automatically takes number one. Then we'll talk about ghost stories. And we'll see if it beats it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all I got. There's nothing really. I'm, I'm, I want to dig into some later albums here, so <laughs> <laughs> definitely check this one out, though. Like, if you're new to the band, this one's good. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll do our color coding here at the end. I mean, this one could stay number one. Who knows? First album bias. That's right. Hashtag. All right, so with that, if you like it, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. We talk about ghost stories. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Be safe. Make good decisions. Tonight I sit around pushing my shit down the drain. Using a bloodshot and a clothes.